Welcome to a Legendarium episode about Hypatia of Alexandria, the martyred mathematician of the late Roman Empire. In this episode, we will talk about the woman who became a distinguished astronomer and mathematician in the final days of the Roman Empire. The mathematician and astronomer Theon of Alexandria lived and worked, unsurprisingly, in the Roman city of Alexandria. He became one of the last members of the Library of Alexandria, a body of men dedicated to preserving Greek learning. Despite the decline of the Roman Empire, Alexandria still attracted the best minds of the day. Around the year 370, Theon and his wife, whose name has not survived, gave birth to a daughter named Hypatia. However, Theon refused to impose upon his daughter the traditional role assigned to women. Instead, he raised her as one would have raised a son in the Greek tradition by teaching her his own trade. As such, Hypatia led the life of a respected academic at Alexandria's university, a position that only males could previously aspire to. The Library of Alexandria supposedly housed 500,000 books, a staggering number as each had to be copied by hand. In this capacity, Hypatia wrote Book 3 of Theon's Almagest, which laid out the Earth-centric model for the universe. This would not be overturned until the time of Copernicus and Galileo, 1100 years later. A mathematician and astronomer in her own right, Hypatia wrote further commentaries and taught students from her house. She never married and remained celibate throughout her life, devoting herself to learning and teaching. By all accounts, Hypatia proved an extraordinary woman not only for her time, but any time. She became such a popular speaker that men gathered around her house to hear her speak about mathematics, science, or logic. However, Hypatia lived during the years when imperial patronage led the Christian faith to grow as never before. In 391 AD, the Archbishop Theophilus acted on orders from the Roman Emperor Theodosius to destroy all pagan temples in Alexandria. Theophilus thus tore down the Temple of Serapis, which may have housed the remnants of the Alexandrian library and built a church on its old site. Despite the ascent of Christianity, Hypatia followed the Neoplatonic school, a belief system in which all things emanated from a heavenly being called the One, and humans could understand the cosmos through logic and learning, a natural faith for an educator. One of Hypatia's students, Senesius, later became a bishop and used her teachings to explain the Christian concept of the Trinity. Theophilus, the archbishop who destroyed the remnants of the Alexandrian library, would be followed in 412 by his nephew Cyril, who continued his uncle's hostility towards other faiths. In one of his first actions, Archbishop Cyril closed and looted the churches that belonged to the Novatian Christian sect, whom Cyril regarded as heretics. Soon after, Cyril began struggling with the pagan prefect Orestes for control of the city. Since Hypatia had become a close friend of Orestes, Cyril blamed Hypatia for keeping Orestes from truly embracing the true faith. Many churchmen saw Hypatia as a stumbling block to those who would accept Christianity. Such men believed her charisma, charm, and excellence in making difficult mathematical concepts understandable to her students simply made paganism look too good. Infuriated Christian writers and preachers claimed that Hypatia used astrolabes and black magic and that she beguiled many people through her satanic wiles. They further blamed her for beguiling Orestes away from the Christian church. Matters grew worse in 415 when Orestes ordered a man named Hyrax, one of Archbishop Cyril's men, publicly punished. Hyrax had slipped into a synagogue to spy on the Jewish community, apparently to look for evidence of Jewish plots against Christians, whether that evidence proved to be real or imagined. 
When the Jews noticed him, they complained to Orestes, who promptly punished Hyrax for his crime. This enraged Archbishop Cyril, who called upon the Christians to drive the Jews from the city. Alexandrian Christians murdered dozens of Jews and drove away the survivors. Christian mobs then looted the emptied houses of the Jewish quarter, apparently forgetting the commandment against thievery. In the frenzy inspired by their so-called victories, the mob then went searching for Hypatia. On her way home from delivering her daily lectures at the university, Hypatia suddenly found herself beset by an angry mob led and incited by Christian monks. These monks, led by Archbishop Cyril's right-hand man Peter the Reader, dragged Hypatia into a church. The monks asked her to kiss the cross, become a Christian, and join a nunnery if she wished her life spared. She apparently refused, and the monks then dragged her before the cross and stripped her naked. They scraped her flesh from her bones with oyster shells before chopping off her limbs. Her blood spattered the church's marble floor and altar. To annihilate the woman whom they believed to be their enemy, the monks then flung her limbless trunk into a roaring fire. After Hypatia's death, a Christian mob sacked and burned what remained of the Alexandrian University on orders from Archbishop Cyril, then tore down all pagan temples. A mass exodus of scientists, intellectuals, and artists from Alexandria followed the city's turn to rule by zealots. The church later declared Archbishop Cyril a saint for his efforts in suppressing paganism, Yet his enemy Hypatia lived on as well. Historians have long seen Hypatia's death as a watershed mark in history ending classical paganism and beginning the age of Christianity. Hypatia herself has become a symbol for feminists and a martyr to pagans and atheists. Voltaire used her to condemn the church and religion in general. English clergyman Charles Kingsley made her the subject of a mid-Victorian romance. Finally, she became the heroine played by Rachel Weiss in the Spanish movie Agora, released in 2009 and in the United States about a year later. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.